response video to the continuing hypothesis is true a youtuber and uh, the uh, videos whole video series basically so in your uh, most recent videos you wanted to see if there was an argument you can construct uh, that would support the continuing hypothesis and uh, you know there are there are arguments that support the continuing hypothesis I mean they're out there uh, but however in my own uh, you know ponderance or pondering of uh, of um, continuing hypothesis, uh, I did not manage to construct a, uh, you know, a continuing hypothesis is a true model. Now, however, I doubt I did come to this, uh, you know, I do come to this review, you know, with some interesting thoughts to share that uh, may uh, change your mind to the continuing hypothesis, you know, may, may not be true, may not be true, may be false. Uh, but first, let's get out of the way some terminology. In the uh, previous couple of last video you used the term reductio ad absurdum now that actually was used uh, in slightly in incorrectly uh, the reason being is because reductio ad absurdum is a Latin term for proof by contradiction that's what it basically is and that's when you prove something is true by proving that if it was you know not true it contradicts you know already known proofs things like that so today we talk about the continuing hypothesis uh, we know we, you you and I both well know that you know a left knot equals the cardinality of natural numbers and two to the left knot equals you no know, set of real numbers so well, however, what ex I came up with some ideas to, to, to look at. Now, what if we were to take the sum, a little hard to see maybe, but right there. What if we take the sum of all the uh, LF, uh, num uh, LF numbers, LF not LF1 all the way to, you know, LFN, or, you know, however many LFs you want to take the sum of. Uh, now, if you look at this, interesting thing to point out is that, that when you, the N, the number of LFs you're taking is actually a member of the natural number set. Because we, you know, there's no set whose cardinality is between that of the natural numbers and that of the real numbers. That is an accepted and you know very you know well, well reasoned argument and you know widely you know thought by mathematicians to be you know correct as you know as it should. It's you know logically proven. Um, nonetheless, though, it's interesting to say because you know what 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 does this mean? Like why why is exact why is it exactly you know that it's sort of like it loops back sort of i mean there's there's a lot of things you can say about this but it's just interesting uh interesting thing i came across thought i would share and um besides that uh there is um what what you also said that um that two to the left not equal is undefined uh or the two, zero times the left one is undefined now if zero well I, I personally believe I I actually looked online. It's no not even a belief. It's zero times two left not does equal zero. It's you know that's just a proof of it. I mean that's it, that's just not agreeing with that. It's saying like zero times five equals you know is, is seven. This is not correct. The reason why I think this is why I think they came to that conclusion is why uh, zero times two to the left not is actually zero is because you know what let's suppose we take you know um a left not minus one, you know times zero that you're going to get zero so why is it why is a zero property any different when you get to you know un, un, uh, the level you know levels of uncountability because nonetheless though i mean there are numbers numbers exist it's just that we cannot necessarily count to them uh, because they, they would you know take an infinite amount of time and uh, they're just that's when they start to get um inter interesting to, to, to look at however nonetheless they are numbers and um you know, natural numbers are you know subsets of the real numbers. I mean, that's what they are. They're they're parts of it. That's why the uh, natural number uh, set is less than that of the real numbers. Now, however, what if we look at it from the standpoint that there are in the integer set and the uh, rational and irrational number sets? How exactly does it all play out? Because there's no cardinality whose set is between that of you know LF one and LF not. However. If that's the case, then what, what, where, where's the intuition behind, uh, where's, where's the intuition, you know, follow through? Because the natural number set is smaller than that real number. That makes intuitive sense because that, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six is, you know, not, not as, uh, you know, it's not as, you know, in, in, it's just not as many numbers as, you know, 1.1, 1 1.112, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1 point, you know, you just, things like that is not enough. So how is, you know, what does this, you know, all mean? Like where are the, where are these uh, sets, you know, uh, where does this cardinality of integers come from and things like that what what is there where's the cardinality of that set and if uh if if natural numbers are a subset of the integers which are a subset of the reals that would include their card imply their cardinality somewhere between that so i came up with a slightly uh, new uh, approach of looking at it um and i just it was, i guess i maybe slightly revised the general continuum hypothesis let me uh Try to you know get the right camera angle there. Yeah, it's right there. That's the Geelong big formula starting all the way from here. It basically says a left a left knot 
this the x x is you know if x is a uh, cardinality is um between that of the natural numbers and that of the reals that there's no set that's like that such that x is not a member of the integers or rational numbers uh that includes irrational but i did not include the uh, number symbol because i do not know the uh, rational number symbol uh sorry irrational number symbol so you know, these must this must be the only exception to, to, to the rule. I think I don't, I'm not I'm not exactly sure as to why that why those two are left out. It seems a pretty uh, pretty solid argument to say that there are cardinalities between that of uh, left one and left nine. And if that is the case, then there are cardinalities between a left yeah left uh, between zero and one. Maybe uh, taking out the left symbols, and you know that would mean that uh, Catherine hypothesis uh, sort of the, the way it's you know constructed sort of falls apart. That's my argument uh, against it. Uh, that just seems, you know, pretty well reasoned. Um, and let's see, what, anything else I want to cover? Yeah, I also wanted to look at it from, the, uh, to really drive the point home, you can look at it from a uh, geometric standpoint. Imagine, I'm not sure if you've ever studied, you know, geometric spaces or things like that, but uh, like if you ever graphed, you know, a line in R2, which is like, you know, the XY axis, XY plane. So um, look at it from that perspective because if you have an infinite amount of numbers in R2, the amount of real numbers. Now, what about R3? R3 seemingly has more because there's an XY, there's a third coordinate, Z. And, uh, you know, what What do you make of this? Because there are, there's more coordinates to be, you know, to be, you know, plotted that are, there are more coordinates than, than, uh, than that, 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 there, that there are in R2. And so from a geometric standpoint, the continuum hypothesis, you know, kind of, uh, it, it's, 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 there's, there's, there's a, a well, a, there's an intuition behind saying that R3 is larger than R2. Like, it makes perfect sense. Now, what about, you know, Rn dimensions, like an infinite amount of dimensions? What, you know, what does that all mean? Uh, that, I would say, would be an infinite amount of dimensions. A uh, possible argument for that would be, um, I guess, that left number hierarchy keeps going and going. Uh, maybe it's like an infinity of the left number hierarchy. Maybe it's the greatest affinity defined by uh, just mathematics. Of course, this is this is I mean this is all vague and continuing hypothesis is you know not really proven or disproven in set theory. This is just you know my ideas behind it. Geo I think ge geometric spaces really uh, play a role in this, and uh, the, the, that just makes more intuitive sense to me at least. So that's why again, the reason why I don't believe the continuing hypothesis is you know true is because of the fact that where does integers and rational numbers fall? Because if the same intuition applies that that natural numbers are smaller than real numbers, then why is that same intuition not apply to integers? And rational numbers and irrational numbers when they're all completely valid number sets and they all exist and um so yeah that's why that's my argument against it now i do appreciate it is good to look at things not that being said it's good to look at things from a different perspective and see that uh that the continuum policy may indeed be true i mean you may be completely correct maybe you know 60 down maybe 56 years down the road maybe even more there are maybe a mathematician who proves the continuum policy all along was true or all along was false and uh you know that that will be that, but right now, I guess in this time period, it's interesting to look at. You know, how how uh, how exactly uh, what are the views around it? And no, uh, that's there's a reason. There, I'm sure there's uh, other claims you can make, and uh, to to understand why most professional mathematicians uh, disagree with the idea that the continuum hypothesis is true. I mean, they have probably even more well-reasoned arguments than me. I mean, I'm I'm an amateur mathematician like yourself, uh, just like you, and I'm only 16, so I'm sure they know better than I do. If, if, I mean, they, they might be able to, they'll be able to construct a more, a better argument for this. But this is just me uh, thinking about it. Um, now, that means how exactly would proving continuum hypothesis being true or untrue play out? Well, if you think about it, you could just the second order logic and uh, axioms and that and uh, something like that would probably play a huge role, a huge role in uh, making the uh, the to prove or disprove the continuum hypothesis. I mean, it's, it's good to take a minority standpoint. And uh, so it's, it's good you're you know, trying to look at things from different angles and uh, things like that. It's always a good thing to look at. But uh, my personal view is continuum hypothesis is false because of the integer set, natural, uh, irrational number set. Where do they fall in between all of none and all of one? That it contradicts the continuum hypothesis. Um, a lot of people revise it to say that X, that, that the continuum hypothesis is uh, true uh, in every case uh, except for the case that the, um, X is equal to the cardinality of natural numbers and rational numbers. And of course, looking from a geometric standpoint, uh, there are ways, many different ways you can look at it. Um, but yeah, so I guess that's all for this video. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, so I guess you know, keep uh, studying mathematics. I I like it. Uh, any other videos you have, I'll be you know glad to watch. All right, that's all. That's all for now. Uh, see you uh, later.